In this video, I want to share with you three skills you need in order to master violoncello da spalla really fast, get on stage as a concert performer, soloist or a bass cantina player. If you are now a violinist or violist, you could be on stage literally within five days, a week or two weeks and transform your career, separate yourself, differentiate yourself from the mass, from the competition and do something really different and attract a lot more success, more attention and also more material rewards to your career. Now, the three skills are very simple to remember. Now, uh, one of the skills includes playing this instrument. And in order to get this right, you have to remember about the six Bs. Write them down. Belt, blocking, bearing, bowing, bridging, and the sixth, being bold. Now, let me explain you in a little bit more detail. The belt must be of exactly correct length. If you get the belt wrong, you will have a very hard time mastering this instrument because the instrument will wobble and it is like playing the violin or the viola without chin rest, without shoulder rest. Okay? Now, the blocking. What do I mean by blocking? The instrument has to be stable. The instrument has to be blocked between your chin and your right shoulder so that it doesn't wobble as you play and it doesn't shift left or right as you change positions. What do I mean by bearing? A lot of violinists get it completely wrong and they raise their head of this instrument much too high like they would do on the violin or on the viola and that's wrong. On this instrument your hands has to be, have to be in a natural position just like I'm speaking right now to you. This is the natural posture when you play the violin shoulder spalla. So this is very essential, this is very important for your bowing to work correctly. Now, what do I mean by bowing? A lot of players get it wrong and they start bowing way too fast, way too light, like they would do on a violin. But if you are even a viola player, you know that bowing on a viola must be a little bit slower, tastier, juicier. So it is the same here, but four times more. All right. So what do I mean by bridging? You see the instrument is large, but doesn't mean that you cannot play large instrument. But however, a mistake a lot of violinists and violists make is they pick this instrument and their left hand is in exactly the same posture as they would have it on the violin or on the viola. So they would try to stretch their pinky. No, that doesn't work on the violoncello de spalla because it's a larger instrument. What you have to do instead, you have to let your hand in an absolutely relaxed, natural state. You literally stretch your first finger rather than your pinky. Sometimes you stretch your pinky and this is how you bridge much wider distances. And this is exactly what you do when you play guitar, viol, lute or any other musical instrument that has a vibrating string length much longer than the violin or the viola. Does it make sense? Yes or no? And finally, the last letter and that is being bold. What do I mean by being bold? You announce the date of your performance earlier than you feel you are ready because you potentially will feel never ready and other people will not tell you, hey, now you're ready to go and perform, now you are a soloist, this will never happen potentially. So you decide a date yourself and I guarantee magical things will happen and your body and your mind will finally start to cooperate and look for solution to make it work rather than look for excuses and every possible way to make it impossible or difficult. All right, so this is one of the areas and I call it the Able Musician Accelerator, the six Bs. Write them down, six Bs, the Able Musician Accelerator. The second area is important in order for you to be able to present this instrument to your audience, to your employers. Now, some musicians just don't care about whether it was this instrument in the past, whether it's the history, whether it's the culture be behind. They just don't care. They just want to play. And if that's you, that's fine. But if you want to know what to play, what are the roots, the, the cultural roots uh, beneath this instrument, then you need to know something about the past. Now, the good news is past is an acronym where the first letter stands for performers and players in the past, in the 17th and 18th century. All those people, important cello composers who wrote for this instrument and they call it simply violoncello. But sometimes they use different words because Italians in the 17th century were just as crazy as they are today and they have all this mess of terminology and violoncello just happened to be one of those terms. But the common term for this instrument was violoncello. Right. They were also authorities, so that's the second letter of the word past. Authorities. What do I mean by authorities? 
The authorities are not necessarily composers, not necessarily performers, but they are nevertheless authorities in the music domain in the 17th and 18th century and they wrote written documents. They left written documents where they documented the existence and the use of this instrument in the works of those composers. Besides B and A players and authorities, they are also pictures, sketches, designs, paintings, iconography, so to speak. So the S stands for sketches, which stands for pictorial evidence around this amazing instrument. And if you are like myself and you just take a flight and you fly to Italy or France, you'll find all these paintings here and there, and I can share with you some of them, no problem. So the last letter of the word past stands for tools, because a lot of musicians and also instrument makers tell me that, Dimitri, there are no surviving instruments. The truth is there are 50 or 60 surviving instruments in the collections around the world, and that's what I call them tools, because would you agree that musical instrument for a musician is a tool to make music, and they are tools, surviving instruments. Past people or performers, authorities, sketches and tools, this is the past of the violoncello da Spalla. And this formula I created for you to help you to get, to make the progress much faster. I call it Violoncello da Spalla past authority. All right. So the third area, the third area is all about getting paid for your gift, for about turning your passion for music into profits. Because would you agree that if you do not get paid or you feel underpaid, it causes a problem. Yes and no. Even if you do not care about money, still, if you do not make money, it just doesn't inspire. It doesn't, just, does not, just doesn't work, you know? And so, potentially you are like myself. Maybe you have been to the conservatoire. Maybe you are surrounded by amazing musicians, just like myself. I'm surrounded by amazing musicians all my life. And what, I know, what I've learned from my experience and from experience of hundreds of other musicians is that they have been to conservatoire or university and the only thing they've learned, myself including, is talent. How do you use your talent to make music, to play the instrument? How to be good on the instrument? How to play clean, fast, beautiful sound and you name it? How to blend into the band, into the group? How to be a good employee? But the thing is, in order for you to be self-sufficient, independent, more profitable, more, excuse me, more recognized professional classical music, you need five other areas. And the good news is that I made it very easy for you to remember because the five other areas form the word artist. The first letters of these other areas form the word artist, where A stands for awareness, R stands for relationship, T stands for talent, S stands for structures, E, I stands for inform, and T stands for transform. Awareness, relationship, talent, inform, structures, and transform. That's what I call an artist in the 21st century that is a professional artist. And the formula that I have just shared with you, I call it a professional artist pathway. That is for you if you want to be more independent, more recognized, more profitable, more self-sufficient, more artists in control. Because when you agree that, hey, your talent is already there, your passion for music is already there, and getting paid for this will not take away from your gift, from your talent, it will just make your life considerably easier. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Do you agree, yes or no? So these are the three skills you need in order to successfully and quickly master violoncello da Spalla. I hope you found some value in this video. I really thank you for watching, for potentially sharing it. If you feel like some musicians might benefit from learning what you have just learned here, and I wish you a lovely day. This was Dimitri Badiarov, violin maker at Badiar Violin, speaking to you from my workshop in The Hague, the Netherlands.